All right, so we're back. Uh, let's see where we last left off. It was a few days ago. Um, we were going to let this paint all dry up and then give it a buff um, to bring it up to a kind of a luster that we wanted to as this is kind of a, you know, a more flat paint, the red is anyway. And uh, I think after that, we're going to be doing some hardware installation and so forth. But I wanted to buff the guitar before we put on the logo, which would really be the next step. Not the logo, but the numbers. Now, if anybody knows approximately when this was applied to the guitar, like was it in 80, after the 84 tour? When was it put on and how beat up was the guitar before this logo was placed on it? Is there damage under it or is the damage, let's say, did this protect the paint? I want to know how basically how much to relic the guitar before I put this on there. So if, I don't know if Johnny Bean's out there listening or Rob, you've, you've caught on to this or whatever. If someone knows when this was put on, that would be a useful piece of information for me. All right, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and, and compound this out. And I think we can take off the paint stick, right? So we're not going to be doing any more painting. So we can take this off. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, buff this out. I'll be back in a minute. So we went down and uh, buffed it, buffed the guitar a little bit with our compound on the wheel. Um, turn on the light here. And gonna now remove sort of the residue, the compound residue from the guitar. It has obviously the haze of, um, you can sort of maybe get an idea of the level of gloss that we got going now compared to before. Obviously the, the uh, this does not look like um, a factory finished paint job, which is not what we wanted. Um, there's plenty of orange peel, um, semi rough surface that is apparent in some of those better pictures of the guitars from that from this era that he was using um, and really that orange peel is what allows you to get sort of like what we were talking about before the stippling I don't know if you can see like around here there's like little dots of red and that's really those are high points right in the red coat that get uh, knock down first and then remove the black coat. Um, and as you, as the guitar wears, it'll wear according to grain and, and the texture of the underlying coats of paint. Um, so we got, looks like that front is clean. I'm getting these, uh, let me put down the, because we don't want to scratch the guitar, do we? <laughs> yeah scratch the shit out of it but we don't want to do it and excuse my French we don't want to do it in a way that uh, is not controlled right um, control now for the relicking process um, again from the bean pot uh, YouTube video videos with Paul Unkert who was the Kramer employee who basically I've is responsible for the pacer body shape as well as the banana headstock and built these guitars. Um, according to him, they used chains, I want to say, uh, sheetrock screws that they were throwing at it. Um, they dragged it around in the parking lot. I guess I could believe that. I mean, definitely the chains and the um, the sheetrock screws, I could believe. I don't, I'm, I'm curious about dragging around in the parking lot because I've done that to things and it always looks, well, like it dragged it around in the parking lot. <laughs> it doesn't look much, much more than that. Um, so I'm not really sure. Now, I've, I've relicked guitars before and I've actually um, been down to the Gibson factory 
in Nashville to the custom shop there a few times and I've met Tom Murphy and I've you know met all those guys back in the day Steve Christmas and all the employees there and have been in the rooms where these guys are relicking you know the the Les Pauls uh, look at that before I I'm losing you right there but you can see right here how it's already sunk into the grain and that the buffing wheel picked up some of the black and, and kind of deposited it into the grain itself I mean, that's interesting. Um, but anyway, um, at the custom shop, at Gibson's custom shop, they use, I saw chains there for sure. Um, a lot of X-Acto knives, not just for the checking, which is done. You know, Tom was explaining how he came up with that process. That's a really kind of interesting story. I should, while well, buffing this, I'll kind of tell you about it in a sec. Um, but we should finish up about the the relicking tools. I saw um, files, obviously sandpaper, knives of different types, screwdrivers, uh, things like that. And they would go off a basic pattern that they had a picture of the guitar. Let's say it was they were doing, um, I think they were might have been doing some Billy Gibbons guitars when I was there, some of those Les Pauls of, of Pearly Gates. And they would do a portion and then sand it and rub it. And it's really an involved process, but Tom kind of explained how he came up to up for that. And this is an interesting story. We were we were at the custom shop, me and Greg, um, when we were doing something in Nashville, and we were I think we were in the I think we were in the finishing room, maybe where the final assembly room or something like that. But anyway, um, one of the guys comes in and talks to Greg and, and says, "You got to see this." Greg's like, "Huh?" He goes, "Just follow me." So Greg follows him, I follow Greg, and we go into the conference room, which is kind of right by the door, the entrance to, to the custom shop from the parking lot. We go into the door and I'm kind of, you know, overwhelmed as it is already, so I'm not really noticing too much, but on the conference table in there is a, is a black Les Paul. And I'm, I, walk, I just notice it, I hone in on it, and I go at it, right? go right for it, walking over to the table to look at this thing. And I'm looking at the guitar and I'm looking at it and I notice the wear patterns and it's a three humbucker, black Les Paul. And I'm like, this looks like Peter Frampton's guitar. And I look up to see if anybody's going to nod and staring back at me is Peter Frampton. <laughs> and he just <laughs> smiling and shaking his head. And he's like, yep, that's it. And I, that was ridiculous. I mean... You're just there to look at guitars and see how they do things and everything like that. And then you walk into a room, you see a guitar, and you look up, and there's the, there's Peter Frampton. So anyway, um, we got to look at that guitar, and also there was a, another Les Paul in there that was being sort of it was a '60s burst or, or a '50s burst rather, it might have been a '60 um, that they were also looking at to do one of the collector's choices. But they were doing you know the, the this was when they were about to do the. The Frampton guitar. So we got to look at that thing and hold it and kind of, you know, see how it was made. And it was a very unusual guitar. I mean, it had been, um, it's not really regulation. It had a lot of modifications to it that you could see, like in the recurve around the neck. Um, there were certain things that were different there in terms of the binding. Um, you could tell that this guitar wasn't exactly what it originally was. And there's a long story with how that guitar was lost in the jungles of the Amazon. Um, and then recovered from a plane crash or something like that. I don't really know all that story, but it's available. But it's very interesting, and I did get to see that. So Tom, anyway, was in there, I guess, meeting with Peter to talk about uh, how they were going to do the guitar. And um, we all sat down on the conference table, and Tom just started talking. And one thing led to another, and he just started giving us, you know, the history of, of his relic of guitars and using heat guns to kind of sink the finish into the grain and actually using the razor blades to make the checking. Um, it was it was really a privilege to kind of, that day I'll never forget a Gibson. So anyway, back to this thing. So I think, ow, jam my, jam my pinky. Um, back to this thing. So I think we got off all the crud, all of the, uh, buffing compound and you can kind of see now if you look at a previous video it was not this shiny but it's obviously not you know extremely shiny so I think this is just where we want to be and I want to put on the logo now I still have the projector set up to 
to uh, the 5150 rather to put this on now. But I don't know if I need to beat up beat up this line a little bit. Whether there was a lot of abuse to this line, how much of it was remaining, whether there was a lot of paint lift under these letters, that I'm not sure yet. So until I get a definitive answer on that, I think I'm gonna hold off on um, building building out the guitar further from here. I think we're just gonna leave it as um, as it is right here. You know what we might do? We might put in the Floyds then. So maybe put on the Floyd Rose Tremolo and, and drill out for the volume control and take a look at it. So yeah, I think um, we've got some, some good progress on it for today. A little good story about the Frampton guitar. Put the neck on there. It's starting to look like something. So anyway, I think, I think we'll leave it here and uh, we'll see you guys probably tomorrow.